Betty Grable and Jackie Coogan. Oh. We've always time for fun. Here's Tuesday night for your delight. We hope your favorite son. Ah, thank you so much. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Pepsodent Kid, Bob Hope. Any similarity between Easter eggs and the eggs laid on this program tonight is purely coincidental. Ah, <laughs> oh, we had a big Easter parade out here in Hollywood this Sunday. The movie stars walked in the order of their importance. <laughs> Clark Gable was just rounding the corner of Hollywood and Vine while I was still climbing over the Canadian Rockies. <laughs> but you should have seen that Easter Day parade. Everybody wearing their newest clothes. One girl was wearing a silver fox that was still barking at her. <laughs> of course, I was really ready. I bought a suit at one of those credit stores, 90 days to pay. They give you a bicycle with every suit. <laughs> but it doesn't do you any good. They give the collector a motorcycle. I had a knife. <laughs> I had a nice Easter outfit. The pants are bright green and the coat is hangover purple. <laughs> I can only wear it about ten minutes at a time. I have to give the pants and coat a chance to get used to each other. <laughs> really, it's very nice. I got one of those new reversible top coats, too. You know, on one side it's a coat and you turn it over and it's a badminton court. <laughs> oh, the whole outfit is so loud, the malls have to get drunk before they'll come near it. <laughs> Esquire offered me $50 to stay in the house Sunday. <laughs> Certainly fixed that. I wore a very... <laughs> I wore a very small boutonniere. Those big flowers always hide my Popeye button. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Bill Goodman looked good. His socks were so long, he didn't need garters. He held them up with his teeth. <laughs> My socks were real silk, though, I know, because when I hung them up last night, out fell two salesmen with sample cases. <laughs> but the hats the women are wearing this year, I've seen better lids on a double boiler. My girlfriend, my girlfriend wore a pillbox hat, and was it embarrassing? A fellow with a heartburn followed us all day with a glass of water. <laughs> She was wearing a veil, too. It wasn't exactly a veil. She just had bushy eyebrows, and she combed them down. <laughs> Goodwin's girl had on one of those new hats. You know the kind, the little bird perched on it. The bird looked real. In fact, two sparrows saw it, and one turned to the other and said, Look, there's Herman. I told you he'd make good. <laughs> then his girl sneezed, and the three of them hopped off for Florida. <laughs> and boy, I, after the Easter plate, I took my girl out to dinner. And boy, did she eat. <laughs> that taught me a lesson. Never put a la carte before a horse. <laughs> and here's our six hits and a miss singing Cuckoo in the Clock. Take it, talent. Talking to her and the cuckoo in the clock went cuckoo. Every 15 minutes he coo. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Be a pal, be a pal, said the bell to the gal and the cuckoo in the clock went cuckoo. I do believe they're starting to woo. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo. They didn't know that everything they said was over her. They didn't hear the little birdie giving them the bird. So he said with a sigh, who's your peachy pie? And the cuckoo in the clock went cuckoo. So I'm just a little cuckoo. I'm not as cuckoo as you. Then he closed the door and went Yes, 
there, that was our six hits and a miss singing Cuckoo in the Clock. Say, Bill, yes. tell me, how did you and the cast like the trip we took down to the bullfights in Mexico? Oh, Bob, I think it did us a lot of good getting away from the program for a while. You mm-hmm. know, it was the first time I ever saw you just watching the bull. <laughs> <laughs> Mexico, Mexico, the land of romance. Why, Bill, I wasn't in the country ten minutes before a beautiful senorita tossed something from a balcony. Really? What was it, Bob? It was me. But that was an... <laughs> but that was an interesting senorita you were with, Bill. Yes, she was a lovely girl, but don't you think she was a little stout? A little stout? Yeah. Goodman, when she walked in the room, I thought it was Boulder Dam wearing a girdle. <laughs> Well, I guess she was rather sturdy, Bob. In the evening, you know... Sturdy? Yeah, she was sturdy. In the evening, we kind of strolled down to the village fiesta there, and there was a beauty contest. Did your girl win a prize? Oh, yes. One girl got a prize for being the most beautiful, and another for being the most graceful, and my girl got a prize for being the most. <laughs> well, Bill, I love those Mexican customs. You know, I'd make a good, good bullfighter. What? I'd make a good bullfighter. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, now, but Bob... Why was I can get a lot of laughing at the state line? <laughs> all you have to do is take your tongue out, that's all. Go ahead. You know, Bob, you've never actually done any bullfighting, have you? Well, I didn't exactly fight a bull. I used to stand in the kitchen and egg on a mouse. <laughs> I'd put a piece of pimento on a toothpick and infuriate them. Oh, hi, it's easy. Still got the trap open? Why, Patsy Kelly. Whoa! <laughs> Patsy! Tell me, how did you enjoy the trip down to Mexico? Oh, yippee, I had a time of my life. Yeah, I saw that Mexican Romeo you were with. He was quite a cutie. His sideburns were so long, he had them tied in a bow under his chin. Boy, there was a man. And did he have a chili and red pepper breath? <laughs> we were sitting in the garden, and when he opened his mouth to whisper, I love you, four trees curled up and died. <laughs> that Mexican food is really hot stuff, isn't it? Oh, hot, Bob. I ate so much enchiladas and chili that for three days my stomach swayed in rumba rhythm. <laughs> Skinny Ennis took you to the bullfight, didn't he? Yeah, but the cheapskate made me stand behind the fence. We took turns holding each other up. Really? Uh-huh. In fact, I held Skinny on my shoulders for the first five fights. Five fights, Patsy. There were only four fights altogether. I know. The fifth fight came after I found that out. Now, <laughs> so you and Skinny really were stepping high, weren't well, you? Oh, I know. Skinny spent a little money. He bought me some perfume. Perfume? What kind was it? Well, I'm not so sure, but on the way home, we passed the swamp, and three muskrats hollered you who at me. <laughs> That skinny's a great guy. Yes, but boy, is he anemic. <laughs> As he walked along the path, a mosquito bit him, looked him in the face and said, how do you expect me to live on one lousy corpuscle? <laughs> at least, at least skinny's kind of husky compared to that thin brother of his. Oh, the brother. Now, there's a guy that's really thin. You know those shifts that people make inside small bottles? Yeah, does Skinny's brother build them? Build them nothing. After they're finished, he crawls in the bottle and paints the names on them. <laughs> Hiya, fellas. Hiya, Skin. Well, 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 if it isn't Brett Butler, the goon with the wind. <laughs> well, Skinny, tell me, did you find your trip to Mexico very educational? Yeah, Bob. I even slept in an abandoned hacienda. Well, tell me, did you learn anything new? Yeah, man. I learned that La Cucaracha isn't only a song. <laughs> Well, so long. <laughs> By the way, Patsy, what did your family think of Mexico? Oh, they liked it. My father even smoked some of those Mexican cigarettes. Your father smoked some of those Mexican cigarettes? Mm-hmm. Say, aren't they a little strong? I don't know. The next time he flies by, I'll ask him. <laughs> well, so long. Hey, Bob. Do you really think you'd be brave enough to fight a bull? Oh, I think so, Bill. Well, suppose you're in Mexico at the bullfight, mm-hmm. see? The bull is ferocious. He stamps his feet. He foams at the mouth, lowers his horns, and starts to charge. What do you do? Well, I moved out of the $2 seat so I can get a good look. <laughs> what else would you like to know, Bill? Well, there is one question I'd like to ask, Bob, and it's this. Remember that old refrain, do your eyes say yes when your lips say no? But let me ask, do your eyes look gay and happy while your teeth look sad and dull? Now, isn't it a pity to let dingy surface stains dim the luster of your teeth? and cloud the radiance of your smile, isn't it time to change over to a new kind of dentifrice? Time to let Pepsodent Toothpaste with Irium show you a thing or two? Irium is the lively super addition that gives Pepsodent its quicker, keener cleansing action. Irium helps Pepsodent Toothpaste brush away those stubborn surface stains, makes it possible for your teeth to shine with dazzling brilliance. And Pepsodent is the only toothpaste that contains Irium. So if you want well-groomed teeth, then why not reach the goal with Pepsodent Toothpaste containing Irium? And now I take great pleasure in presenting those two favorites of Hollywood Younger set, 
both of whom are now working on the Paramount production Million Dollar Legs, Jackie Coogan and Betty Grable. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Hiya, kid. Say, Bob, what does that NBC on your special microphone stand for? Why, that stands for National Broadcasting Company. See, Smarty, I told you. Why, well, Betty, what did Jack say NBC stood for? Nothing but corn. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind her, Bob. The little woman's a great kidder. <laughs> a great kidder. <laughs> yeah, isn't she? Say, say, it's great having you two up here with me. Remember the fun we had making that picture college swing? Were you in that? <laughs> Was I in that, Betty? Don't you remember that scene where you sat down beside me in the garden and tenderly kissed me? Yes, Bob. And for the same money, I'd do it again. <laughs> now, wait a minute, you two. Just because you were in college swing with me doesn't give you the right to insult me. No, but it gives us the reason. <laughs> Jack, I understand the last year you had a swing band. Yeah, I used to have my own orchestra. I was a full-fledged band leader just like Skinny Ennis. Really? Well, I'm glad to see you recovered. <laughs> You know, Bob, it was just this time last year that you and Jack went on our vaudeville tour together. Yeah, maybe we'll do it again this year, eh, Jack? Sure, but this time I want to stand behind the net. (laughs) Bob, Jack told me all about the trip and how you used to stand in front of your dressing room looking glass admiring yourself. Honey, shh. Quiet, Susan. Oh, what else did Jack say, Betty? Well, Jack said that you admired yourself for so long that when you walked away, your face was still in the mirror. Please. Now, Babesy, when we're out guest starring on the radio, we mustn't shoot off our big mouth, must we, honey? <laughs> now, now, if Jackie keeps talking that way to Babesy, Babesy's going to have to hang one on Jackie's little kisser. Now, look, I don't want to seem nosy, but if Jackie and Babesy don't stop arguing, we're all going to wind up laying a great big eggsy. <laughs> You see, Smarty Ed. Uh, and they say that Hollywood couples don't get along. <laughs> Tell me, Betty, was Jack very attentive when he courted you? Yes, but he could do much better today. Yeah, I know. Jack's had a lot of courting experience lately, but was yours... <laughs> but was yours a very romantic love affair? Oh, it certainly was. Well, we had a date every single night for a year and a half. I suppose after that you decided to go steady. Well, tell me, did you, uh... You shower Betty with gifts, Jack? Yeah, for a while I used to bring her candy every night. Oh, that was nice. What made you stop? The Derrick broke in the candy machine. (laughs) Say, well, look, I used to bring my girl taffy apples. She'd bite into one side and I'd bite into the other side, and then we'd have a tug of war. Gee, that must have been a lot of fun. It was until one night her teeth came out and I almost broke my back. Tell me, Betty, was Jack a very jealous lover? Was he? Well, for a while when we first started going out together, he said he stalked the first guy that looked at me. Well, what made him change his mind? The first guy that looked at me. (laughs) Well, tell me, how did you kids meet each other? Oh, it was a regular movie romance. We met in the theater, held hands through a double feature, then during the newsreel, some fellow said, Monkeys is the craziest people, so we got married. (laughs) Yeah, and now with me, every night is ditch night. Yeah. Well, don't tell me Betty makes you wash all the dishes. Well, all except the ones we get at your pictures. I suppose she washes those herself. No, we let the dog lick those. (laughs) Uh, Hey, Jack, are you very handy around the house? Why, I certainly am. Betty, tell him how I hung the curtains in the parlor last week. Oh, he sure hung those curtains. Imagine my embarrassment the other morning when I started to take a shower and I stepped out of the parlor window. (laughs) Well, let's get serious for a minute. You know, you've been married a couple of years now, and... And I just wondered if Jack. it were... Uh-huh. Jack, shall we tell him? You mean about the new arrival? Jack and Betty, then you're... Y- yes, we, we both thought an added responsibility would be good for us. You mean that... Yes, Bob. We're going to have Betty's folks come and live with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, and I thought you were expecting a baby grand piano. Say, Jack. <laughs> Jack, how about you and I having a little golf game Sunday? Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. Jack won't be able to play golf Sunday morning. That's the only time he has to do the ironing. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute, Betty. Why don't you do the ironing? I did the washing this week. Now, Jackie. Oh, now, listen here, Betty. From now on, I'm going to play golf on Sunday afternoon and play poker with the boys Sunday afternoon, and I'm going to come home just as late as I darn please. Can't I? <laughs> well, we'll talk it over as soon as you finish your ironing. Now, come here while I straighten your tie. <laughs> oh, nuts. Go ahead, Jack. That's a good sign. A good sign of what? Why, that the lady's in love with you. Oh, I don't go for that sentimental stuff. Yeah, well, maybe this will help you understand. If there's a gleam in her eye Each time she straightens your tie 
You know the lady's in love with you. I wear a sports shirt. If she can dress for a date without that waiting you hate, it means the lady's in love with you. I don't mind. I play pinochle with a doorman. And when our friend dances over to join their table, but I pick that ball away boot for brother works there. And... Well, sir, here's just how it stands. You've got romance on your hands because the lady's in love with you. Now, Jack, if she has met your old flames and she remembers their names. I know. Well, the lady's in love with Jack, you just listen. And Sunday night and each day, so I've got <laughs> nothing to say. That proves the lady's in love. How true, how true. And Sunday night when you take her to see that movie. And she says the balcony seats will do. Bob, on Sunday nights I listen to well, Jack. Well, sir, here's just how it stands. You've got romance on your hands. Because the lady's in love with you. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Betty. And here's Skinny Emma singing, What is this thing called love? Take it, Skinny. What is this thing called love? This funny thing called love. Just who can solve its mystery? Why did it make a fool of me? I saw you there one wonderful day. You took my heart and threw it away. That's why I ask you, Lord, in heaven above, what is this thing called love? I saw you there One wonderful day You took my heart And threw it away That's why I asked the Lord In heaven above What is this thing Call love Call love A wise man once said, if you have not lost a thing, you have it. Remember that next time you complain, oh, yes, my teeth used to shine, but not anymore. It's ten to one, the natural luster of your teeth is there, waiting for the right combination to bring it back to life. Well, for millions of people, Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium is the winning combination for dazzling teeth and a flashing smile. Irium makes Pepsodent clean teeth faster, brighter, smoother, better. But remember, Pepsodent is the only toothpaste that contains irium. So if you want all these precious benefits, then brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent toothpaste containing irium. There's a gold mine in the sky. And now Bob Hope brings you his version of There's a Gold Mine in the Sky. As our scene opens, we find Bob Hope and Patsy Kelly in search of gold somewhere in the middle of Death Valley, riding the trail on a pair of donkeys. Where the stars are always blue, Palomar. A fine thing, getting me out here in the middle of the desert with a couple of broken down old donkeys. Say, why are their tails tied together? Well, there are four gophers following us, and they like to jump rope. <laughs> oh, come on, let's call the whole thing off. But, Patsy, you can't quit now. Can you think of an easier way to make money than finding a gold mine? Yeah, but Sally Rand beat me to it. <laughs> anyway, there probably isn't any gold mine there if your uncle left it to you. You shouldn't talk that way about my uncle. He was a fine man. He just got into some bad company and, and sold stock in it. <laughs> I see, and now he's left it all to you? Yes. Robert, my boy, he said, take the stock in my gold mine. Don't try to thank me. I just want you to remember your old uncle. I can see him sitting there now. A tear rolled down his wrinkled old cheek. 
And then the warden threw the switch. <laughs> I don't blame him. Oh, wait a minute. I don't like, I don't like the desert. Where are we? Uh, hand me those field glasses. Great Scott, we're in Egypt. <laughs> There's a camel walking over a hill. That's no camel hoax. That's an ant on your nose. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? Then what's that hump on his back? He's wearing a bustle. <laughs> Wait a minute. That must be the mining town around that bend. What a name. Gruesome Gully. Say, <laughs> sure. hey, this town must really be an historical place. Look at that monument there. What's written on it? On this spot stood the first good humor man. <laughs> Custard glass sand. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Come here, Hulk. Oh, yes, sir. Listen, you're in Gruesome Gully now, and a mob in this town only do things one way. Now, are you going to play the game without us, aren't you? Oh, yes, I'll play the game with you. All right, Tag, you're it. <laughs> Say, Bob, there's an old guy sitting over there on the curb. Maybe he knows where your gold mine is. I'll ask him. Say there, partner. Hi. Now, what's your name? Well, some call me Python Pete, and others call me Yukon. Yukon Jake? No, you can't take it with you. <laughs> I'm kind of corny in a Klondike sort of a way. <laughs> Say, you must be one of my relatives. By the way, why are you carrying that shotgun? This is one place they're not going to build a world's fair. <laughs> Boy, do I kill me. <laughs> Say, Bob, there's the mine office right over there. Okay, let's go in and claim my gold. Hey, is there anybody in here? Wow, a man! You... Say, haven't I met you somewhere before? No, I never have that kind of dream. Tell me, is this the... Uh, <laughs> is this the office of the Lazy Skunk Gold Mine? I'm Bob Hope. Oh, are you Bill's what a hope to met you? That's right. Did you know my uncle? Oh, yes. He was a great guy, Bill. He? he was the only man in the world who wore his wooden leg over his shoulder. <laughs> Well, why did he do that? It's the only way he could scratch his back without getting his fingernails dirty. <laughs> quick. Oh, quick, quick. They're after me. They're after me. They want to string me to a tree. They want to lynch me. Oh, that's awful. Who did you kill? Beethoven. I'm the guy who wrote Hold Tight. <laughs> Sacky. Oh, they got me. <laughs> Say, you're a pretty good shot, stranger. That'll come in handy if you go down and look at the mine. There's a crazy prospector down there who thinks he owns it. Well, what? I'll show him who owns it. Come on, Patsy. Ring for the elevator and we'll go down. Okay. All aboard. This elevator's going down to the mine. There's a gold mine in the basement far away. Hmm, <laughs> a telephone in an elevator. Hello? Is this the Bob Hope that's looking for gold? Yes. Oh, I'd like to take a bite right out of your leg. But I'd never eat ham without any eggs. If you find my gold and take one nugget, I'm warning you, Hope, you'll kick the bucket. Say, who is this? Oh, just a bright-eyed little desert rat. <laughs> well, you're making a dope of yourself, do you know it? Yes, but at least I'm not doing it from coast to coast. <laughs> Tell me, Amos, how long will it take us to get down to the gold mine? <laughs> well, if this elevator's cable is in good condition, we ought to get down there in about five minutes. Yeah, well, what if the cable isn't in good condition? <laughs> well, here we are. <laughs> Say, what a creepy place this mine is. Say, Bob, look, someone's breaking through the wall of the mine. Wait a minute, they can't do that. Oh, no? Greetings, Gabe. Let's excavate. <laughs> Professor, what are you doing five miles underground? Gabe, I was planting a seed in my garden, and I became too enthusiastic. <laughs> well, what kind of a seed was it? Dave, I got a tip to plant a radish five miles down. Ah, it's a long way to tip a radish. <laughs> it's a long way. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, look, there's gold and zinc in this mine. Do you think I'd be a good gold miner? No, you look to me like a real zinker. <laughs> Listen, Professor, what are the proof of you that this is your mine? Because I staked it out, and I've been here ever since. How's that? I drove the stake right through my foot. <laughs> hey, now you dope! <laughs> Say, look, there's a lot of gold over there on the floor, and there's a horse walking through it. Yes, that's the Moon Ranger's horse. Ah, silver threads among the gold. <laughs> You're something of a pioneer, aren't you, Professor? Quite so. I once made the trip across the plains in a wagon. Was it covered? Ah, yes. Both collision and viability. <laughs> I suppose you've made many a long trek across the country in search of gold. Ah, yes. As an uncle of mine once said as it began a long trek, Hope, 
As a chicken from Carrieta. And quotes. <laughs> well, tell me, what's the largest deposit of gold you've ever seen? I once saw some solid gold icebergs. Gold icebergs? Ah, yes. And I came near them, and the, when I did, they rose out of the water. Ah, the rise of the gold bird. <laughs> you Mrs. Blow! Water! 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 Look, Professor, one of your miners over there, he's dying of thirst. Why don't you give him a drink? I can't, eat. Why not? Because we don't serve drinks to miners. <laughs> Look, Professor, we wasted enough time. Let's start digging for gold. How deep is this mine? This mine is so deep, if you go down any further, you'll be deviled ham. <laughs> ah, yes, and if you put your ear to the ground, you can hear people talking on the other side. But that doesn't stop me. I'll take a pick and dig right through. And dig a 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 <laughs> and thanks for the memory And if we brought you cheer The reason's all too clear You bought a lot of Pepsi then And lent to our career So thank you so much And thanks for the memory For Jackie Coogan paired with Betty Grable fared as naturally and laughably as anything we've had. So thank you so much. It's you folks who've truly supported these few jokes each Tuesday cavorted. It's you folks to you who've resorted to cents well spent for Pepsi Den. Oh, say, excuse me, Bob, but I hear you're having May Robeson as your guest star next week. That's right, Bill. Next week, we'll have that grand and lovable actress, May Robeson. Then we'll have Patsy Kelly, Skinny Ennis and his band, our six sets of the Jerry Colonna, and Bob Hope. Thank you, Bill Goodman. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies in Love With You is from the Paramount Picture, Some Like It Hot. And this is Bill Goodwin speaking. Don't forget, Pepsi and Delirium brings you Bob Hope next Tuesday night at the same time. Good night.